So before you say again that it doesn't matter what somebody teaches as long as they're teaching holiness, I want to ask you, do you know where the doctrine of original sin came from? Where the sinful nature or dual nature of man concept originated? It wasn't in the pages of Scripture. Because no one in early times ever taught that man had a dual nature or he was born morally depraved or corrupted somehow or inherited anything from Adam. What's happened is <coughs> this teaching was blended into Christianity in the 4th century by a man named Augustine. And you need to examine the facts so you can understand how this affects the preaching of repentance. Because you can't ask people to stop sinning and live holy after you've told them that they're born corrupted and they can't do anything right. If they can't do anything right, then how can anything they do be trusted as virtuous towards God? See, you're so afraid to give man any ability because that he can save himself, and he doesn't need Jesus, that you strip him of all ability whatsoever, and then you leave him in this, this despair where he's just waiting for God to change him. And of course, God doesn't change or interfere with man's free will whatsoever. He draws, he asks, he knocks, he, see, he holds forth his hand, he's not willing and he should perish, all those things, but he's not going to interfere or intervene with his will. If a man is just sitting around waiting for God to change his evil desires from naughty to nice, well, that's not going to happen. That's why I fear what happens with these folks that are saying they're living holy and they're accusing us of sin for trying to correct their errors in judging us to hell, I fear that they're in that state where they think, well, God's doing it all anyway. He did it all for me. I'm trusting in the finished work of Christ, so therefore I am holy. I am righteous and sinless. While they're waiting for God, your willingness is what matters. You are the one who has to resist the devil. You're the one who has to keep your heart pure. You're the one who has to work out your salvation in fear and trembling. You're the one who has to make your calling sure, run the race with endurance. Well, how can that happen if you got this sinful nature dwelling in you, inherited from Adam, that prevents you even from producing deeds worthy of repentance? So quickly, I'm not going to go into a whole long dissertation of this. It could take hours to go through the whole history behind what happened in the 4th century and how it set the stage for what occurred the rest of the way through history up to the Reformation. I've touched on it in many of my other videos. If you want a full explanation, please just go to my website and click up our, Is Man Born in Sin? And there's plenty of articles there that explain it in greater detail. But basically, Augustine, who was, lived from 354 to 430 A.D., around 4th century Rome, he brought into Christianity, out of his Manichaeism or Gnostic background, the Manichaeisms were just, it's a Persian cult that swept into Rome in ancient times, because it removed the fear of God and the fear of any kind of judgment. So man could go on living in his sins and his indulgences, which was very popular at the time in the gaming and the, in the Colosseums and all that in Rome at that time. Like even Augustine, he was addicted to lust. So that was the perfect escape for him to create this dual nature, which he blended over into Christianity. So he came out of the 17 years of this teaching under Manichaeism teaching. And he himself was... Uh, See, they had the sinners, the hearers, and the elect. They had different levels of, of uh, this teaching. He himself was a hearer because the elect people had to abstain from uh, certain type of foods, everything in the material world, sexual intercourse, and even manual labor. Well, Augustine was not going to abstain from sexual intercourse, as you see in his, his, uh, his confessions. He was addicted to it, and this is the reason this was the perfect teaching to get him out of his obligation to come clean to, before God. So under that, he converted to Christianity out of this when, it, when Manichaeism was outlawed in 382 A.D., you know, after Constantine uh, established his uh, rule in Rome in, uh, in, in, the, in the middle third century here because of the civil war that happened in Rome, and he established his power base in the West, and he made Christianity uh, into the Roman religion at the time, blended all the pagan worships and temple. That's where all the... Wa the uh, idolatry and everything comes in in the Catholic Church because they blended it all together under one church at the time and that became the official church of Rome. So I another guy that followed uh, Constantine outlawed these Manichaeism cults and on pain of death. So Augustine switched 
switched over to Christianity because he didn't want to face a chopping block. So out of necessity, he converted, but he brought all his Neo-Plato teachings into it. And that's where all this all stuff originated from Platoisms way, way back in Persia. This Neo-Platonist dual nature concept. Uh, so he brought in the immutability of God, that God does not change. See, he was upset with the Old Testament, and the reason he didn't convert earlier until it was an absolute necessity to Christianity into the Catholic Church, because he was a professor of rhetoric in Milan as a very young age, and it was a very prestigious uh, position for a young man to hold, and he was rubbing shoulders with all the high and the mighty at the time, but he had to convert over at a necessity because of uh, what the emperor did. But up until that time, he was teaching all the ancient philosophies of Neoplatonism, which was number one, the immutability of God. Everything was preordained, fated, uh, predestined, elect, and all, all, the, all the roots of what we would call Calvinism or Lutheranism was in his teaching, although he didn't come up with the acronym TULIP, but he set the stage for it. He, he's, he has the core, the core beliefs are in his writings, so to speak, what I'm saying. So God doesn't 